here we are inside my cloud services section in my Windows Azure portal. Cloud services are used for two things inside Windows Azure. First and foremost, cloud services are used to provide external IP addresses so that we can gain access to our Azure resources, resources such as virtual machines. Each cloud service will expose a single IP address, public IP address, for you to use to gain access to your internal resources. The second thing cloud services do is allow us to group together uh, lots of Azure components like virtual machines, storage, databases, and websites, so they can be packaged together uh, deployed together so that we can start to offer infrastructure as a service solutions to our business units and our customers. We're going to start off by creating a very basic cloud service and then showing you around some of the different configuration settings that have been uh, created for us. So we'll start off in here with clouds in the cloud service section and we'll say new. Like most of the other um, items we configure in Azure. When we go to create a cloud service, we'll have a choice of doing quick create or custom create. We will say custom create. Here, three things. First of all, we have a choice of selecting the subscription. And if you have multiple Azure subscriptions, you can choose subscription that you want to deploy your cloud service to. Secondly, we can choose the region or affinity group. So we can choose the region into which our cloud service will be created. I'm going to choose Northern Europe, North Europe. We also need to provide a URL. This is the URL that we use to um, access our cloud service that's used to upload resources to the cloud service later on. Um, as you can see from the balloon, the uh, field can only contain letters, numbers, um, and it has to be unique, has to be unique throughout the whole of the Azure subscriptions. So we will use one here um, as my URL. Finally on the screen, notice the bottom tick box, deploy a cloud service package. Cloud service package can be created in several different development tools and the entire package can be uploaded to your Windows Azure subscription. A cloud service package would include details of the cloud service itself and then, then details of all the resources that you're deploying into the cloud service, like virtual machines, databases, etc. The way that we're creating the cloud services here is to first of all create the basic cloud service and then in later videos we'll show you how to associate networks, virtual machines and storage with the created cloud service. So I'm going to tick the box, tick and say create. And that will now take a minute to go off and create my cloud service. Now, because my test cloud service is empty with nothing inside there, there's not a lot for us to see. If I select my test cloud service and go to dashboard, we've got nothing deployed in there. So nothing to see, nothing in production, nothing in staging. And that would be the same for monitor, configure, and so on. So instead of looking at the test cloud service, let's look at a cloud service that I've created already that I use for my Azure subscription. And we'll start off by looking at the dashboard. So in the dashboard here, we can see that I've got two running resources and three stocked resources. These are the virtual machines that are deployed into the cloud, this cloud service. We have a nice little graph that shows us details of the running resources. And we'll see more about that later on, but it's showing us here CPU percentage uh, that's been used by the different cloud uh, resources. But if we scroll further down, it's where we start to find more interesting information. So on the right hand side here, we can see the public virtual IP address used by the cloud service. This was assigned as a cloud service is created. Uh, please note that this virtual IP address will change every time the cloud service restarts. We can also see the endpoints. Now these represent the running services right now in this cloud service. 
and these represent for me virtual machines so i've got two virtual machines running at the minute mgb vm1 and mgb vm2 and for each virtual machine i have both rdp and powershell endpoints and you can see for each virtual machine it maps the virtual ip address to the port number used by that virtual machine to access the rdp or powershell services if you add more virtual machines to the cloud service more endpoints will be created and it's these endpoints that give the cloud service its primary functionality also on the screen we can see the location northern europe the date that the uh, cloud service was created we can also see the subscription id now the subscription id down here is used when we're configuring things like uh, certificates when we're configuring things like protection vaults the description id is used to identify the subscription they want to associate those resources with scroll back up and we can see manage linked resources these linked resources identify features like storage that are associated with the cloud service and by associating linked resources as the cloud service is packaged up as it's moved as it's scaled those resources can be scaled along with it if we scroll to the top from the dashboard section we can say monitor and under monitor it will show us basic information about our uh, installed vms that are installed into the cloud service at the end we have uh, certificates and we can see the details of the management certificate used for this cloud resource these management certificates can be used to form uh, vpn connections into these resources and we can use this screen to upload uh, additional management certificates and then we have linked resources for mine cloud service is none instances and scale now instances and scale are used by um, availability sets and auto scale features of our cloud service and if i go back to dashboard as we scroll further down you can see here that we have the ability to create availability sets and we can the ability to also uh, configure auto scale availability sets allow us to identify which resources in the cloud service need to be um, kept online at the same time so if we've got a um, cloud service that contains uh, front-end machines mid-tier and back-end machines i can say which machines have to be kept on time on um online to maintain uh, a, a minimum level of service now once we configure availability sets we can also configure auto scale options the auto scale options would look at our cloud service and if for example we find that our cloud service is reaching certain cpu thresholds we can say that additional uh, roles can be um, automatically deployed now this is the uh, basic cloud service configuration in a later post we will look at configuring a cloud service package and upload an entire package with windows powershell now we've got a cloud service in place we can start creating virtual machine networks and virtual machines and place them inside the cloud service so that we can access them uh, through rdp um, or through remote powershell thank you